Hey. Hey, Rocky. Uh, that's uh Oh, hey, it's a self-portrait. It's a, a shadow selfie. What that dumb hat you wear. You need to ditch that hat. <laughs> you look like an old man in that picture. <laughs> you are an old man. You're older than I am. I am. I'm going to be 67 next week. I will be 67 by the time this airs. And you're going to be how old your next birthday? 70? 70 here very shortly. But you'll be the seven zero, huh? Wow. Yeah, then you're really old. You start mentally thinking, man, that really is old. Well, you start realizing that you know, if you get another good 20 years, you've lived, uh, you'll be 90. So that's I not know, a lot of time. Scary left. stuff. Yeah, it's not a lot of time left. Yeah. Hey, so today, speaking of not a lot of time left, here's a guy who's got a boatload of time left, guy named Jason. Jason is one of our most loyal followers and listeners. Matter of fact, we had to yell at him because he's always posting a comment first. He doesn't let anybody have a chance. I see, you know, now there's a guy who knows how to ring the bell and no, let me see. He knows how to subscribe and then ring the bell. And he actually gets notifications as soon because by ringing the bell, you get a notification. Oh, that's it's immediately. And he watches us immediately. He, he gets, he doesn't do anything else with his life. He stops what he's doing. If he's feeding his kids, he stops. If he's with his wife having an in-depth, lovely dialogue and conversation, he says to her, honey, John and Cole are on, gotta go. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we love Jason. Thank you, Jason, for, and he let us come on his show. Well, we forced our way onto his show. That's what <laughs> so um, he said he was watching recently, he sent us an email and said he was watching a video recently and there was a quote by Johann Brahms. Now, for those who don't know, he's a great classical composer. And he thought maybe we could uh, have a conversation about it. So here's the quote that Jason passed along to us. Without craftsmanship, inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind. <laughs> I just, as soon as I saw the email from him, I just laughed because I knew what Cole's response was. And look at him. He's got that smirk all over his face. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, remember, this is the brilliant highly revered Brahms and you're going to disagree with them. <laughs> well, let's not disagree, but uh, that quote to me puts the emphasis on the craftsmanship. Yep. And let's face it, certain, if you're a furniture maker, craftsmanship is number one. But as a photographer, I just think we put too much emphasis on technical perfection, things like sharpness and other things, over the idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't Ansel have a quote about, uh, I think it was something about this technically perfect image that had you no know, fuzzy, a, fu I, a fuzzy concept over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a technically perfect image without some great idea behind it is nothing. Now, here's what people say. Yeah. But if you can't express it, it's nothing. It's nothing either. I got to tell you, I'd rather have a great idea that was not technically perfect than the other way around. Yeah. Because so many of my images and so many of the images of the greats aren't technically perfect. I went to see an Ansel Adams exhibition. It was in uh, a neighboring town and it was less famous images. Mm. And they were big images and I'm getting up close and what a terrible spotting job. I mean, <laughs> pathetic. I never, even as a kid in my darkroom days, would have let a printout that was wow. spotted so poorly. And then I've got my friend who shows that. Is it the Margaret Bork White image of the migrant mother? Is that who? She, no, shot? that's a Dorothea Lang. Dorothea Lang. And he's pointing out that he, uh, she had focused on her shoulder and not on her face. It was technically imperfect. But it didn't matter because the idea and the emotion and how you felt about it was there without it being technically perfect. Yeah. So it's a kind of a chicken and an egg thing. I'd rather have the idea with less technical perfection than a technically perfect idea with not much of an idea. And I would counter and say that I agree to a point and the point for me, the, the, the line is, 
the more I know about craftsmanship, not technical perfection, and I think they're different. Craftsmanship is not necessarily technical perfection. Craftsmanship can be uh, focus stacking. Craftsmanship can be understanding the limitations of my sensor and the dynamic range, and I might have to do HDR bracketing or something. So knowing how to do that part of the craft Craft can also be knowing how to do certain things in post-processing and watching a video or two so that I can go, oh, oh, that's, I know now I can use that to achieve my vision and achieve the thought because I know how to do that. And I know what you're going to say is, but I can figure that out later, but I don't see the, I don't see the harm unless that's where you're devoting all your time. If you're, if you, all of your time is watching how to videos and you're spending 90% of your time doing that and only 10% of your time capturing images, thinking about what your vision is, thinking about what project you're going to do, having the idea, as you say, I would agree hundred percent. That's backwards. Your scales are tipped the wrong darn direction, but I, I have a hard time buying into the fact that learning some or working on my craftsmanship is a bad thing. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up focus stacking because that's a pet peeve of mine. Oh, okay. Suddenly now everybody is into focus stacking. And I can't tell you how many times I see somebody out there going through, trying to figure it out and do this long procedure for a shot that doesn't even need it. I am so sick of everybody focus stacking just because they seem to be able to do it when it's not even needed for the image. Well, how and do you really feel, Cole? And, and I've seen that with other <laughs> techniques. We we saw it with HDR. Yep. We, there's so many of these fads that sweep through like a wildfire on a in the Palouse. <laughs> everybody is doing it, and for no good reason. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just work on the image and the idea and the concept. Yeah, and that's true because uh, what when you then pivot to I've got to focus stack this, you're out of that concept and idea phase completely. You're totally focused on technical at that point. And when I see people lose learn a new technique, they are then looking around saying, how can I apply this technique? Rather than saying, what do I see and what technique do I need? Yeah, on that, we agree. Agree. On that part, I agree. That part, I totally agree. So even though I... Hey, some are going to say, once you're out in the field, though, Cole, and you realize you need this technique and you don't have it, you're out of luck, has never hampered me. It's never stopped me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like learning techniques. I like Jason's channel. He wow. talks about some techniques. But uh, and and I do and but I don't to your point though I don't go out looking for okay I learned focus act and finally got it nailed let me go find a fo I don't that's not what I do at all that, that would be contrary to my practice my practice is still to be taken we see it all the time people oh, get an IR camera everything's IR for a while until they come on to yeah. a new technique and a new fad and a new and they're why, always saying, why are you always throwing me under the bus why are you always John, you're you got self, a new... you're self incriminating. I I didn't say John. <laughs> you didn't say it out loud. <laughs> no, look. <laughs> All right. Our Good priority has got to be the image. I, I would agree with that. It, it'd be nice if you came up with a good one. 